If you're watching this video, chances are you've had some bad clients experience in the past and that's that's okay, we all had them as freelancers. So in this video, I wanna share with you a method for thinking about how to choose the right clients so you can work with clients who are appreciative of your work and you're gonna have a great time working with them. Stay tuned. Hey friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to Flux, where we talk about design and freelancing, and today, how to avoid bad clients. Now, actually, I've watched a lot, a bunch of these red client flags videos on YouTube, and I think a lot of them are misleading, and the reason is, I can't just give you, here's a list of red flags because me and you are different. We're different people with different preferences and different places in our careers. And what's wrong for me might not be a wrong thing for you. So I just don't wanna give you just like a solid list. I think that's kind of stupid. I do wanna give you a framework for you to think about so you can create your own checklist that makes sense for you. So let's break it down. It's basically four kind of components that you have to think about for yourself to understand what's kind of a, a red mark for you or a red flag for you. First thing that you should think about is your niche. Now, we've talked a lot about niche and I don't know if you know the concept of niching, meaning you only work with a specific type of clients or industry um, as a freelancer. Now, a lot of people have that and I support that. Me, for example, I only work with you know, tech startup. So I know just to begin with, if somebody approaches me and they're not a tech startup, for me, that's a red flag. It's probably just not a good fit. However, a lot of people who are just starting out haven't figured out their niches and it's okay. When I was starting out, I also experimented with a variety of different clients in different niches doing different projects. However, even if you don't have a specific niche, I still have kind of niches that are for me red flag. And this is just personal because of my values. You know, I do not work with people in gambling or porn, for example. So these are things that I know, for example, those are red flags. If somebody would call me from these industries, I would definitely just say no upfront. I don't even have to go forward because I know that it's not a good fit. So if you already know your niche, that's easy. If that's not in your niche, just say no upfront. If you don't have your niche, just think about it from the different perspective. Who are people who you just do not want to work with to begin with? Having this on paper as part of your checklist is really gonna simplify the thinking process. You don't have to think about, ooh, but they actually have a big budget. Ooh, maybe that. You're just gonna say no upfront and move on with your life. All right, second thing that you should think about is budget, right? For me, I know that everything I can't or I actually, I won't work with people who have a budget of less than $10,000. So for me, that's easy. I talk to them and I know by the question that I ask them, right? Like, how are you funded? Who's paying for the project? How many people do you have in your company? What's your revenue? By asking all of these kind of questions in a preliminary call, I can already understand if they fit the budget or don't fit the budget. Now, obviously I wouldn't tell you to have the exact budget constraints that I have. So you need to think about yourself. What kind of a budget do you wanna work with? And is having some, something below this budget is kind of a red flag for you? Then you need to note this. The, the One of the worst things that happens is people do not put this on paper and they kind of think they don't really have a very clear mark as to what their budget is. And so when people come with a lower budget than that, they kind of think, well, maybe I can do this or maybe I can't. Now, again, this is really depends on where you are right now in your career. Maybe for you, any budget is okay. Maybe for you doing a work for free right now just to build your portfolio is is fine and that's not a red flag that's completely fine you need to think about yourself you need to understand what your own constraints are and try to think about what would be a red flag for you i mean again working for free for a portfolio piece and a testimonial can be a good idea if you're just starting out that being said you want to have a very clear what you will be willing to do and what you won't be willing to do and that's a good thing to have on the checklist. The third thing is communication type. You need to know yourself and understand how you like to communicate. And if you see your clients do not communicate in that same style, that might be a red flag. And I'll give you a few examples. So for me, for example, I hate notifications. So for me, a client that starts texting me and sending me a bunch of texts, for me, that's a big no-no. Now, 
you know, I clarify that. I set expectations with clients. I say, all right, I like to work with emails and I usually typically open my emails and check my emails during the working hours and these are my working hours. And if I say that and I still see them start the texting me all, all through the day, um, that might be a red flag for me. So either I'll warn them or I know just to not get into this project to begin with. Again, as I've said, I only open emails you know, during the day call. If I see they're starting calling me at night, again, for me, that's a red flag. So I know myself, I know the times that I work and how I like to communicate with people. It's gonna maybe be different for you. So think about yourself. How do you like to communicate? Of course, set expectation with clients. Make sure that once it's noted, if you see them communicate in a way that's inappropriate or doesn't feel well for you, that's probably a red flag for you. And the last thing is kind of general, but it I would call it values, right? We each have things that we value and that kind of guides how we operate in the world. So for example, I might, be valuing design and understanding that it's worth to invest time and money in coming up with good design. If my clients do not share these values, and I can learn about that during the call with them and how they behave, to me, that's a red flag. Um, but your values can be anything from, you know, somebody maybe is a vegan and only wants to work with other vegan brands or whatnot. Your values are unique to you. So you need to think about what is important to you and who do you want to work with that if you see that they're the opposite of that, um, that is probably a red flag for you because it's just going to make your life a hell while working on this project. And again, the main takeaway from this video is, you know, you can't take other people's checklist or red flags because you have to think about yourself. Now, you're probably gonna get this wrong the first time because you're not gonna think about everything. You might go after watching this video and make some kind of a checklist. You're probably gonna forget a bunch of things and that's okay. The way that we're gonna learn is by missing some things and then, you know, getting it wrong, failing, having a bad experience. But the, the way to learn from this is every time that you see yourself getting pissed or understanding that you've made a mistake, you need to take note of that. One of the big, great advices that I got from my business coach was to have kind of a document that is called runs uh, operating system and just basically documents what I understand about myself, what pisses me off, what excites me, what makes me sad, what, you know, and, and that's every time that I have these strong emotions, I take note of that. So I learn how to better operate myself. It's funny, but we do, we aren't born with great kind of self-awareness. So once we start documenting that and understanding what triggers us and what pisses us off and what makes us happy, once we actually start documenting that we can be much more aware and make better choices. Hopefully this video will help you make better choices for yourself. Let me know in the comment below what, what triggers you or what is a bad flag for you. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.